Okay, so we just added these glow effects, inner glows, outer glows, color overlays to the lights. I'm going to go ahead and move these layers, maybe just the red layer lower. Oh, got to get to the right one. There it is. So I'm going to use action key left bracket to move it down behind the skull. So it's kind of interesting. If I move it on top, <laughs> remember how I made the teeth or I guess the, the bottom of the skull, which would be like the upper teeth. Don't think too hard about it. I made it out of the microphone custom shape. So if I put it underneath the teeth, but on top of the circle shape at the base, I get a little frown line, smile line there, which is kind of interesting. I'll show you something else you could do. What if I wanted it I can make a duplicate of the circle underneath, move that circle on top, and then actually take that duplicate circle and take its opacity down. So I can just hint just barely at that. So there's so many options you can play just with um, just opacity with your vectors. And that does kind of a nice echo of the tier on the other side. So, you know, there's options. I can always, I'll mark that. Oh, you can't mark. Oh, you can mark with a color. Oh, great. I'll mark that with a color. So if you right click, if you go down all the way to the color options, you'll see. So I'll mark that layer with a color because I'm not sure if I want to keep it or not. All right. Next, I'm going to texturize uh, the skull itself. So I might as well start with the, the base, the first shape I created. And I'm going to do an inner shadow, not an inner glow. How is an inner shadow different than an inner glow? Well, its default blending mode is to darken, to multiply. But you can make your... Oh, and a shadow is different than a glow in that a glow works from all edges of the vector, but a shadow will work directionally, you know, based on a light source. So I'm going to swap the light to be coming from that side. And so you can kind of see that shadow now on that circle. I'm going to go ahead and make it a little bit noisier. Right now it's just filled in with black, but that seems, that seems fine. I don't need to make it more complicated than that. I'll say OK. And then I'm going to add to that um, an inner glow that shows on the other side, you see. And the inner glow, it's a red right now. Kind of like that, especially on that edge. And I'll just, yeah, I'll just keep that as it is. Remember, you can always turn effects on and off as well, just with little eyeball next to the effects. So you can see if you like them or not. So that's without, that's with. I do like them. I think I can even push the shadow a little bit more. Come on. Here we are. So I'm going to spread that shadow more and size it so it's bigger. And then just take its opacity down a little bit, noise it up. I want to soften it still. So I think it's with size we'll soften it. There we go. Take its opacity down. Yeah, that's good. Okay, now it just has these really subtle 
edges to it. Yeah, so the microphone that's layering over it, they look like smile lines, they look like creases, crow's feet around the eyes. Happy accidents. All right. Now I need those same effects added to the teeth, right? But in the right places. So this is a little trickier but I can make a duplicate of it and then move those effects onto one tooth, one bottom. Clearly it's not gonna be the same way there. Erase what I made a duplicate of. And then adjust them. So I'm gonna turn off the uh, inner glow, the red. Definitely don't want that. And I'm gonna really dial back the other stuff. And instead of multiply, which darkens everything, I'm just going to put it on normal, see what that looks like. And then if I want it um, in a different mode, I can try some of these different features. But I think I want a different angle too of it. See, maybe a straight angle. There we go. There we go. Take all these down. Maybe change the color to a gray. Yeah, so I have more control of its darkness. Yeah, that works pretty well. Then I can duplicate those. Move the effects onto the next shape. And then erase the one I duplicated. Then I can duplicate those move the effects onto the next shape, and erase the one I duplicated. So what about all the stuff in here? Well, this is my trick for that. I'm going to duplicate my 65% opacity skull circle and then I'm going to shrink it towards the middle like this right around the eyes and then I'm going to move it up over those microphone shapes come on I'm moving the wrong shape somehow I'm moving one of the microphones instead of my copy. Here's my copy. Okay. Move that up. And so what that does is it it blocks all of those kind of darker microphone shapes in the middle. Not entirely, because I have it at a 65% opacity. But in a way that's helpful. Maybe I'll push it down a little bit as well. So this is kind of the fine-tuned work that goes into vector design sometimes. And I could play with layer effects there as well. In fact, one of my favorite things to do is to just change it from normal mode to what's called dissolve mode which breaks it up into a bit of a, a noisy pattern anyway. Yeah, and that works well. Okay, now the eyes. So there's all kinds of ways to, to mess with these. I think I want a little bit of an outer, or maybe an inner glow on the eyes. And that red is pretty menacing. Somewhat appropriate. Maybe I'll warm it up a little. 
Take its opacity down a little. Maybe take some of its color out too. All right. Then I can add those same effects. Use the drop down menu just to see them clearly. Come on. Drag it onto the next eye and then erase the copy. Or instead of erasing the copy, do this with the copy. Do a color overlay or a gradient overlay that's black to white at full opacity. And then control T, or yeah, control T and shrink it down to be kind of a pupil. And then I can duplicate that, move that above the other eye, and just drag it over. And that helps helps us to see the eyebrows as well. Now I don't want to texture everything. I like the flatness. But I definitely want to texture the shield so it looks metallic. And this is a great use of the gradient overlay. So you have color overlay and then you have gradient overlay. Gradient overlay, you'll see that some of the defaults, these are the exact same as they are in Photoshop, are metallic defaults. But you can still play with those. In this case, I can play with the angle of it. And I can play with what's called the scale. I'm going to show how strong those are. And I don't love the copper color, so I like that scale, but let's go ahead and change by double clicking on the gradient bar, change these colors a little bit. Keep them in the same place, but just move their position. right? That makes no sense. Keep them in the same place here, but move their position on the hue scale. And it will look more like gold. Kind of tarnished gold, but gold nonetheless. And if I think that's a little too strong, I can just take the opacity down on it, right? Because you have that base yellow. And so it will just subtly change the base yellow. And if I want the blend mode to be dissolved, it will be textured as well. But I think that's a little too strong for the metal. So I'll leave it gradated. Okay, and then next, the hat. Because it was a file cabinet, it's one nice shape. So what kind of effects will work for that? Let's just do a subtle gradient overlay. Do the dark blue to blue. Take that opacity down. And dissolve. But now maybe I want to drop shadow. So it looks like it's putting a shadow onto the skull. So this is a, a layer style we haven't done yet. Drop shadow. Here you set your angle. I want to set an angle straight down. So 90 degrees. Sometimes you have to type it in. Then I want to make it noisy, and I want to decrease its size. 